hello and thank you for coming for the screening of Night of the um, Living Dead. Um, this is not only a, a, a crucial film, it's a crucial restoration. So uh, I have someone here that's going to help me discuss that. But uh, this is like a, a film that changed the history of horror cinema. Um, it brought it from a gothic uh, mood and iconography to something completely revolutionary um, and politically charged. And um, it was a group of young filmmakers from Pittsburgh they were actually uh, supporting themselves doing industrial films. And, um, and they, they wrote this thing for, because horror was a drive-in popular genre, and they thought it was a good idea. And uh, you'll see how groundbreaking the film is. Uh, George Romero was uh, one of the great filmmakers of the genre, and he always thought of himself, you know, and I had the privilege of, of working with George in, in doing retrospective in Europe and then in Paris and then New York and, and writing um, a book about him. And George always saw himself, his point of reference was never um, genre, was never horror, was never blood and guts. Uh, it was Orson Welles and, and, and um, Michael Powell. Michael Powell tells of Hoffman was his favorite film. So you, 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 he, you know, it, it, his language, by force in one way, became horror. But he was always thinking about something else, and his films always uh, ex expressed that. And uh, this is like a sharp, tiny, uh, incredibly um, illuminating and, and and tough film. And uh, and I can't think of anyone better to help me here with my uh, shortness of words and to talk about the restoration because you know it was also independent cinema is is, is often threatened because you you have a, a a film and then the rights migrate and this film story is very very strange and they will tell you all about it so it's very it's it's. It was it was a groundbreaking restoration because after all this year from '68, a negative was finally obtained from a garage or a cellar in you know in, in, in the proximities of Pittsburgh. So uh, to help me with this is a, a great American critic and now curator at MoMA, Dave Kerr, and uh, who also knew George as I did. Dave. Well, thanks. Uh, I work at the Museum of Modern Art, and this is a preservation that we did. I'm afraid I wasn't directly involved in this project, and that uh, that all belongs to our, our colleague, uh, uh, Katie Trainer, who really uh, ushered this thing through. But this is an interesting case of a film that was uh, never lost, but sort of went astray in the sense that uh, it fell out of copyright. And uh, the filmmakers lost their rights, and it was reissued in dozens and dozens of bad, you know, first VHS and DVD copies, to the point where it was almost impossible to make out George's original intentions. It, uh, when it was released in 1968, uh, George had titled it "Night of the Flesh Eaters," and the distributor decided that a better title would be "Night of the Living Dead," and I kind of agree with that. Uh, and they substituted the title card, and they forgot to put the copyright notice on it. So they had a very successful first run. I mean, the film was uh, quite notorious when it came out. As you'll see, it um, I'm probably compared to contemporary horror. It's it's not that graphic, but for 1968, it was jaw dropping. I mean, people had really never seen anything this extreme. Roger Ebert wrote an article in Reader's Digest uh, denouncing it. Uh, this is a, a menace to our children, pretty much what he said, and I couldn't agree more. And it's uh, uh, Luckily, uh, George and his partners had saved the original negative and taken good care of it over all these years. And Katie managed to convince them to bring their negative to MoMA, where we preserved it. And the film, well, when you're working with an original camera negative, the restoration process is pretty easy. In this case, it was done largely by uh, Cineric. George was around for some of the color grading, 
had to convince him to leave in some of the mistakes that he made, which is something filmmakers always want to do when the restoration process comes around, is correct those little errors. In Night of Living Dead, notoriously, you can see a copy of the script sitting on <laughs> one of the tables, and George wanted to take that out, but see, that's part of the mythology of this film. You know, you really shouldn't do that. Uh, I think he did get away with making a couple tweaks to the sound, but otherwise it's pretty much as it was released in 1968, but finally back in good focus and good contrast and good sound, and it's, well, it's a remarkable motion picture. I... I want to add something because I, uh, you know, uh, George never had control of the film because there was no copyright. So he saw all these reissues and these remakes and these things made, and he could. There is nothing he could do or say, and um, and he was not directly involved in the negotiations about the negative. So as usual, it, and it's it's one of his um, part of his vision. It was you know it was a great skeptic. And uh, you know, always suspicious of power, obviously suspicious of anything legitimate and institutional. And I remember when MoMA called me because I, I was close to George and said, um, "We're doing this. Can you come? Can you call him and say if he can come to the premiere of it?" And uh, and I said, I'm "Sure, I can call him." So I called him in Toronto, and he said, "Well, you know, I know about this by." third degree, nobody called me about this restoration, I'm not involved, the negotiation was without me, and I don't give a shit. And I was like, okay, George, uh, this is not a good idea, because this is the only time you're gonna have to, you're gonna be able to intervene and, and, and see the film and, and participate to the restoration process. So it was through his wife and, and, and my uh, coaching a little bit that he, he actually agreed not only to show up for the uh, for the premiere but to participate to the color grading yes, and yes, yeah uh, and, and I was there that day and for someone that hasn't had any control on his film for so many years he had a remarkably short list of notes there was <laughs> the uh, it, it was the gunshot you know was the sound a couple of things and um, it was a couple of other little things. The script he left, there was something he wanted, a better effect, and we were like, no, George. But he had few. Like a moth come buzzing through at one point. A moth, yeah. They, but, they were, they were, but they were like this little, it was so moving to me because you felt like, he, you know, he, he, this film has become from a group of young filmmakers project to like a myth. And then he had so little that he wanted. And it was the mostly just like uh, short production values that he wanted to fix, you know, on a little piece of paper. And, uh, and, it, and it was great. And then he loved it at the end. And he was happy at MoMA. And, and he was very grateful. Yes, he came to our premiere. Yeah. And that, I think, was the last time he appeared in public was when we showed the film. Possibly, yeah. September of 2016. So that's been a while. Yeah, I mean... Like most of the horror filmmakers I met, George was just a very sweet and gentle man. And uh, I, you know, really was a privilege to know him as, a, as I did. And Julia knew him much better than I did. But uh, yeah, and this is a film that really changed our ideas of what horror cinema could be. It uh, takes it out of the realm of the supernatural and puts it somewhere else. And you know, I said, his, he was a, brought up a devout Catholic, I think one of his buried themes is when does a person stop being human? Is there a soul in that body? You know, and the one frightening thing that we've all seen in our lives, we've never seen vampires, we've never seen werewolves, but most of us have seen a dead body and they're scary. And that's what this movie is about. You know, what happens? What changed? So it's, uh, it's still even though you can probably see more blood and guts at the drive-in these days, it's still a very powerful, very gripping movie. Thank you for being here, and thank you, Dave, for being here, and thank you, MoMA, for taking good care of this negative and finally giving us Night of the Living Dead.